morning. My name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today um, I'm going to talk about a bit of a funny subject. Um, I'm going to talk about um, books that say they're talking about English glass but don't entirely talk about English glass. So I have here a stack of books and they all purport to be about English glass and um, they also include Irish glass, even though it clearly says English glass on there. Yeah. Um, I, I actually went through all, because I knew this was a thing, and I just thought I'd check, let's have a look. I thought maybe I could do a video on it. And um, only one book passed the test yeah, of um, not actually having any Irish glass in it. So I'd like to talk show you what's in these books and there's varying degrees of um i think some of it is fails through not knowing uh, uh but um most of them blatantly go i think one of them's even got a chapter on irish glass so it's kind of like yeah don't you say english on the front so yeah it's quite interesting um i think i should talk about why that might be so <coughs> um sorry about that I think the UK, England, was probably making about 10 times as much glass as um, Ireland when it was at its peak. And, and what happened was, there was, um, it's all caused by tax, of course. Um, in 1745, the British government put a tax on glass, table glass, and windows as well. And, um, but we'll talk about the table glass bit, so, but... In 1780, it rescinded the tax in Ireland to encourage um, enterprise in Ireland. So there was no, there were, I think they were making glass bottles and things like that, but there was no fine um, glass being made in Ireland, I don't think, before that, that time. And um, yeah, so as soon as that, that tax came off, uh, a bunch of people up to who's went over to Ireland and said we're going to set up shop here even if we have to import the sand and the materials and the workers to to do it because the tax was quite high I don't know it changed over the periods and the way it was done was changed um, but I know by 1845 it was like 300 percent so or, or by weight so the actual glass by weight um, you'd weigh it say it was a shilling of glass uh, you'd weigh that shilling of glass and then you'd pay three shillings tax on that. Um, and then that obviously then got part. So the company still needed to make profit on top of that. And then whoever the middlemen were or whatever, they needed to make profit. So glass was quite expensive compared to um, other countries. And, um, and that also drove quality glass in the UK as well, so that there was no cheap moulded pressed glass, hardly any being made at that time because it was actually an expensive material. So anyway, then what happened was after that, um, I think it was about 1821, um, they decided, oh, uh, we're getting hammered a bit for this, uh, we'll put that tax back on. And um, yeah, the Irish glass houses went into decline and Waterford was the last one, I think they they shut in 1851. So, so yeah, so that's like a golden age. I think, um, I think be able to Belfast might have been the first opening in um, 1781. Waterford opened in 1783. But yeah, glasses are kind of like that kind of 17, eight, most people say 1783 to 1850 was like the golden age of glass for Ireland. Um, and what makes it interesting is that because it was made in quite disparate parts of Ireland there's some recognition of who, what glass houses it came from and also for the decanters they were pressing, they were blowing them into moulds and the names of the companies were quite often in the bottom or not often but frequent enough so that you'd go you'd start to recognise the styles of the different glass houses there was none of that in the UK. 
um, there's only a couple of companies I know of that um, you would recognise the glass. Um, a lot of the glass makers were in clusters, Stourbridge in the northeast, I think some in London, and um, they were all churning out stuff and selling it all over the country. And it's very difficult to pin it down. Um, and yeah, there aren't many, um, and they were all copying each other as well, just to make your life easier. Because if someone saw someone else that was making something that was selling a lot, they'll go, oh, we'll make that, we'll make it exactly the same. So yeah, it was all of it. With the English glass, it's difficult to pin down who made it. What makes Irish glasses interesting, or more interesting, is that quite often you can pin down patterns and shapes and styles, etc. to specific glass houses, so you can, and I think I've said before, context is everything in this game. If you can say, oh, it was made in this year by this maker, etc., etc., for this purpose or whatever, um, and if you can name a designer as well, obviously you won't do that with these, but frequently if you can name a designer as well, then um, it, it gives it context and gives it value. And um, so people have collected Irish glass specifically. Um, I'm not Irish. This whole trip, this whole row up here is all Irish. This top row above my head. Um, and then some of this stuff down here is Irish too. Um, so yeah, so I'm specifically looking out for it and if it's going cheap, I'm buying it just because I like that provenance as well. Um, and I'm not Irish. I, I lived there for five years, but yeah, that's, that's another story. But anyway, what I will do is giving you that story and why people are interesting it, even if they say they're not going to talk about it, they still do. I'm going to show you what's in the books just for a bit of fun. Okay, so here we go. So here's the um, first book I'm looking at. It's English Bottles and Decanters uh, by Derek C. Davis. It's English Bottles and Decanters, yeah. So, um, and then go inside and what do we have? Early flat brush Irish decanter. A bit less certain of this. I would, I would say this was Anglo Irish myself, but he might have better provenance than me. Um, this is very Irish. Um, and he's saying it is. And then he's got another one he's saying in Irish. And another one. This one's a quite a famous pattern. That's cork. I think. Oh, and he's got another cork one. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. But yeah, it, even he, even in this slim volume, because it's not very thick, um, he managed to squeeze several Irish decanters in. Um, love this book. It's a really nice little book. If you see it cheap, or even a few quid, it's a good book because um, a lot of the other books have stuff that um, has come out of museums. This is either his own collection or people he knows collections. So you're seeing a lot of things that you're not going to see in other books. So and he's nicely laid it out. So um, yeah, this is a nice little book. So this book is called English Glass by Sidney Compton. And um, yeah, he has a whole section on Irish and cut glass and when he says cut glass he is really talking about still Irish glass because um, everything in here this section is Irish and it's quite you know this is very Irish glass there's no might be English might be Anglo-Irish whatever this is all really high Irish glass um, you know he's it? got a whole chapter here Even, he talks about it being cut, but these ones are completely uncut. And I don't even think the stoppers are ground in. They're that uncut. The, the stoppers, these are just designed to sit in the top. Um, and they're not ground in quite often. Yeah, and no cutting at all. So, yeah. Um, these are nice, that's nice. Anyway, you get the idea. Um Plenty of Irish glass in this English book. So this book is called Early English Glass by um, Daisy Wilmer. Um, this is one of my earliest glass books. 
and yeah, she can't help herself. Um, she even tells you it's Waterford. There's not masses in here, there's a couple of bits. I think there's another bit on the other page. Um, yeah, there's another one. She claims this one to be Waterford as well. So, yeah, this is a nice little book because um, this is made up of her collection of glass. So, I think there's the odd mistake in it. But, and even here, look, you can see she's talking about Cork and Belfast and Waterford. Um, so, and Dublin. So, yeah, um, she's talking about Irish glass here, um, even though it's early English glass. But, um, yeah, we will keep going. So this book is called English Table Glass by E.M. Elville. Uh, there's other bits in here, but I'll show you this blatant piece of... Piece of um, so he's got two whole pages of um, Irish decanters. Um, and there are other bits and pieces in here as well, but yeah, um, and he, he he's knowingly put them in, and um, so all good for me because you know it's my interest. But it is funny that they would um, put these, and these are from someone's collection as well, from um, Dudley Westrop's collection, and. Um, I've shown you his book before. It's a very good book. So this book is called Ingrid Glass for the Collector, 1660 to 1860, by G.B. Hughes. And, um, yeah, so this one is a bit of a failure in that um, he's not spotting that some things are Irish. This is the most blatantly Irish piece of glass in here, which is a turnover bowl with this. Can you see the way that the lip is cut? That is so Irish, and the moulded bobbin um, stem foot there, or leg. Yeah, it's um, so Irish, but he doesn't actually state it is. He just says it's a stemmed fruit bowl. Um, and there's a couple of other bits, but I won't, I won't bother with those. But he, I think this is a bit of a failure on his part. This book is not a bad book in other ways, but um, yeah, he, he does have a few... Uh, misses. So this one is English Table Glass by Percy Bade. He is my enemy. Okay, in this book he tells you decanters are boring. There are only three decanters that I can find in here. Here's one. Um, yeah, and the other two that he's got in here are broken. But this one is clearly not English. Um, yeah, the tops. It should have a pouring lip on the top there. I think this might be, proportionally, it looks like it. there's no room for a third ring there, really. Um, I think the top would go out and, and come out and be the pouring lip, because the necks, these are quite spaced. Um, so I think this is a B. Edwards of Belfast decanter. Um, yeah, and the other one is destroyed. And that might actually be Iris because of the um, inscription that's on it. But yeah, it's... Um, yeah, my enemy, this man. Two broken decanters out of three decanters in the book. So, um, yeah, so this is um, the one that, that passed the test, the no Irish test. Um, he's in England, so he's very clear about it in England. Um, this is not a bad book. This is pretty good. Um, it, obviously, it's well out of print. I'm not sure what date it is. Yeah, it's got. Let me show you one of my what for me is a standout piece in here. If you try to ID what you're doing, he's actually this is all the types of different foot, nice little drawings, and then all the kinds of knobs. And he's in reasonably thorough, I think. Um, you probably have to search quite a few other books to find something he's missed. So, so yeah, it's got some nice bits. There's another similar um, one for old wine wine glass, uh, bottles as well, showing you the shapes and the ages and doing with drawings as a cutouts as well. So, yeah, this is a good book, and um, it's got some nice illustrations. It's got some what is modern glass, but this is an older book. I can't remember what the year is, but, yeah, so, yeah, this is a good book. The old books have merit in themselves, yeah, 
I am po pointing out a rather epic fail in all of, in most of those old books, and um, it is what it, is. it. It was a thing. Irish glass is still collectible today. I think um, more so than the old English glass. Um, the Irish do like their own glass. I think better than we like our own old glass. So um, yeah, that's a thing, and it and it retains its value better. So finding old bits of Irish glass. I get quite excited when I find a nice old piece um, as a bargain. That's me. Any any piece of glass as a bargain, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll always endorse it. If you see old books, um, glass books, going for a pound, two pounds, whatever, you know, anywhere, just going for a few quid, buy them. Just to have a look, see what they've got, see if they've got something you haven't seen before. And um, yeah, with that said, I will put uh, the names of all the books in the description. And um, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe and, and have a wonderful um, celebration for the rest of Christmas. Yeah, my voice is still, but um, yeah, that's what it is. Anyway, I'm going to get on now. Thank you. Bye.